Hey, good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you're uh, tuning in from. Thanks for joining us on today's webinar, a technical demo of SAP Dynamic Authorization Management, or SAP DAM for short. My name is Norb Leong. I'm the Senior Director of Product Marketing here at Next Labs. And before we get started, I just want to get a couple housekeeping items out of the way. Uh, first off, all the lines have been muted, but feel free to submit questions via the Q&A or chat box that you see on your screen. We set aside some time to answer questions at the tail end of the webinar. Um, and secondly, this webinar is being recorded, so we'll send you a link to the recording uh, within a day or two. So with that, let's go ahead and get started, take a look at the uh, sneak peek of what we will be covering today. So John, if you could just go to the next slide. So we'll just start off with some quick intros on Next Labs, who we are, what we do, and then we'll follow it up with some key customer challenges that we're seeing in the marketplace with respect to uh, SAP data. And that'll segue nicely into a demo of SAP DAM, which is going to be the meat and potatoes of this webinar. So the live demo will be given by my colleague, Jonathan Cooper. And then finally, time permitting, and I think we will have time, we'll answer the questions that get submitted during the course of the webinar. So without further ado, let's dive into this. Next slide. So I'm just going to start off with a quick background on Next Labs. We were founded 15 years ago in Silicon Valley, which we still count as our headquarters today. Uh, we've since expanded our offices to include the UK, France, Germany, Malaysia, Singapore, and China. Um, our customer list is a veritable who's who of the Fortune 500, spanning a number of different industries, including aerospace and defense, manufacturing, financial services, pharma, among others. We've built a strong ecosystem of partners that range from SAP, Microsoft, and Amazon, all the way up to the large global systems integrators like Deloitte, Accenture, and Infosys. Uh, we've also partnered with organizations like NIST that help establish the standards for technologies like dynamic authorization and attribute-based access control, which John is going to touch on. Um, so this deep expertise is reflected in our patent portfolio, where we've got over 60 awarded and another 30 or so pending. Slide. So given the need to utilize data effectively to run a business, you know, many organizations, they're faced with a common challenge. How do I go about managing access to my business critical data while still keeping it secure and within compliance? Ultimately, customers must reconcile their business objectives with their security and compliance mandates. It's a balancing act, if you will. On the one hand, you've got the need to share information within a company or perhaps with partners to get things done. Maybe you're part of a supply chain where you have to share design plans with upstream or downstream partners. Collaboration is the name of the game, but you have to balance that against protecting the crown jewels, too. You want to share only that part of the confidential data necessary for the task hand. And with that, I'm going to pass the baton to my colleague, Jonathan Cooper, who's going to walk you through um, the demo we have planned today. John, it's all yours. Thank you, Noah. Thanks. Good intro. <coughs> so I'm John Cooper. I'll be running the demo. I'll just put one slide I want to show you before we jump into the live demo. So um, at Next Labs, we use a term called ABAC, which is attribute based access control. And uh, this extends traditional role based access control um, to have a richer set of attributes. So, role based access control is focused around the user or the assignment to a role or a group. It's usually focused around a line of business or a function. We extend this uh, not only for the user, such as the non SAP attributes, such as LDAP and the identity access management and IDM providers. We also extend it by some other attributes. So one of them is content. We can look at the content of the data you're actually accessing. So if it's classified in any way, we can read that. You know, it could be classified as HR data, sensitive, IP, GDPR data. And uh, there's many ways we can read that or look at certain attributes, any attributes of the data, especially with an SAP. And I'll show you this in the demo. So an example is that if data was top secret, then a policy could be there to say deny all. And then you allow certain user groups or people or uh, certain exceptions to that data. I'll, I'll show you that in the policy. And the second uh, attribute we can look at is the context, i.e. the environment. This could be things like device type. Is it a mobile? Is it a desktop? Is it the IP address known? Is it not known? A time of day? And as you can imagine, these are quite dynamic 
and a challenge for traditional role-based access to uh, access control to consider. So an example here is if a HR business partner's got access to some sensitive HR data, you know, salary information, people's addresses, their promotion information, then you should be able to access that in the office. With ABAC, you could say actually when they leave the office, if they're commuting on the train on the way home, um, then they should not be able to access that data. So you can work out where people's locations are and use that to make a decision on. So the first thing I want to just call out here is this. It doesn't replace role-based access control. It actually complements. So it sits on top. Um, we take a risk-based approach to protect what we call the crown jewels. So whatever that is, that's in, depends on you. It's whatever is, is important to your business. It could be priceless. It could be customer information. It could be designs. Uh, it could be anything, basically. And the other few things is that this is data-centric. With role-based access control, it's um, if you have sensitive data, then you have to protect it within the application. And that's often difficult to coordinate across an enterprise-wide basis. Um, and the reality is, I'd love to say that all your data and information is held in SAP, but it won't be. Um, it'll be collected over time, over decades, and held in many applications. So we can show how one policy can protect multiple applications, SAP, non-SAP. Um, we've got lots of plugins as well for things like Microsoft products, SAP products, uh, CAD tools, and collaboration sites. And the final thing is, I just want to pull out here that I'll show the automation and how this is granular. And by that, I mean we offer fine grained access control. So, with role based access control, it's either allow or deny. You cannot can't access certain data. We take that a step further. So, from the previous example, the HR business partner commuting on the way home, she's trying to look at some sensitive HR data. What we can do is say, actually, She's not. She's not within the office. She's on a mobile, but will and she's will allow her to access that data, but mask certain fields. And I'll show you that in the demo as well. Okay. So the demo is um, going to take about twenty minutes. So it should take us right up to the half past the hour. A lot to cover, so I'll be quite quick in certain parts. But I want to pull out these main things I've talked about. So I'll show you how we can look at the. Uh, content, the classification of a data, we'll look at the context, the location, I'll change the location of a user, I'll change the classification of a data to show the real time change there and how you could use that in your business. And then we'll look at the fine grained access control, how we can filter, mask, and hide data based on any of these three attributes. And also I'll show you this working for SEP and S4 HANA, Fiore, and also SharePoint we used in a policy. And at the very end, I'll, I'll show you just a little teaser for the next uh, webinar, which is around another product called EDRM, Enterprise Digital Rights Management. And that's where you um, share and collaborate data. As you share that, if I share a document with NORV, if you had the correct attributes to read that, you'd be able to see the document. If not, it'd be encrypted. And I'll show you that briefly. Okay. So throughout this demo, I've got two users. I've got Adam, he's a good guy, and Jane, she's um, most of the cases denied access to the information. And that's based on the attributes at play. <clears throat> so in this first example, Adam is an SAP, he's trying to access a material, so this material is SP01, and he's allowed access because he's a US citizen. But Jane is uh, denied because he's a non US citizen, and the document's classified. So let me just jump into the Demo. I'll show you this. Okay, just um, no. Can you, can you see that? Okay, just want to check. Oops. Yeah, I can okay. see it fine, John. Okay. So first of all, this yeah, is stock our... overview. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, thanks. This is our S4 demo system. I just want to show you one thing first. <laughs> I'm going to show you the authorizations we have in place for Adam. And Jane, you can see that Adam's got SEP all, and Jane has also got SEP all, which is I'm not saying give everyone SEP all, that'd be a bad idea. The point here is everything you see happening now in the system is controlled by a Next Labs policy. 
So I'm logged in as Adam. <laughs> I'm going to look at some stock, which is a MMBE transaction. And the material I want to look at is this classified material, SP001. So Adam can see that, and that's great. You should be able to see that as a US citizen. I'm also logged in as Jane. And if Jane tries to look at the same transaction, she can see that. We can see everything in the SAP system here, all T codes, everything. She tries to look at the same material, SP01, a different outcome. So we can see here the message. Uh, it says ITAR access denied. You can also have a pop up if you want to say, um, so it pops up so you can actually select that and you have to close that to continue. You can see there's a pop up there. So, how do we do that? When we um, install Next Labs, we install a plugin, it's a, an externalized control center which holds the policies, which I'll show you. But as we install a plugin to the SAP system, it does two things. It allows us to communicate to that control center where we can write the policies and the logic and monitor all activity. And also it opens up some table spaces, Next Labs table spaces. And this is one of them. And this is a classification table. So we can classify any data in SAP. It could be material, it could be fund center, it could be cost center, it could be plan, whatever, employees. In this example, I just showed it was material. It was SP01 that we classified as ITAR. So we can see here we've got a column called jurisdiction and we've put it as ITAR. Now, I'll show you the policy. This is an X-Labs control center where we write and monitor and act, uh, the, see the reports and everything that happens uh, related to the policies. And there's, I've just done a search actually here. I did a search for ITAR policies and it's this one here, which is active and deployed. And you can see this is a, a deny policy. So this is a top level deny policy. And I've tagged it as uh, SharePoint, SAP, and Export Control. I know it's a deny because it says so, but it also flagged as a deny policy. And you'll see here it says, what, what is this doing? It's saying resource components. If it's ITAR jurisdiction, then deny. So if I click on this, it says jurisdiction is ITAR, which is actually that field there. Jurisdiction is ITAR for that material. Okay, so that's it. It'll deny. And that's why it denied. Um, Jane, because she's a non-US citizen. So everyone's denied by act by default, but Adam can access this because he's a US citizen. And this is the allow policy now. So you notice it's a copy of the previous one, but the difference is here, it's an allow. Yeah. And here we have some other attributes to say, look up, and one of them is location. And citizenship there, US citizen, is a US citizen. So that's how he's allowed access to that data. So the top level deny everyone and then punch holes in that. Okay, so that's the first first part of the demo. Okay. The next part I want to look at the what we call the context. So look to the classification. I want to look at the context now. So Adam in that example is located in the US. Now if he changes location, he could board a plane. Next day he could be in maybe Canada, or India. In Europe, can travel easily across borders. Even if it's a building, we could work out what person's location is. There's various means to do that. So in this example, we're going to show Adam is a location is India, and you'll see a different behaviour here. Let me go back into the demo. Okay, so Adam can access that item. So I'm just going to log out of the system. I'll log in again as Adam. What we do is we have a, what we we'll call a, a self-attest pop-up to say you have to state many ways you can determine a location. But in this example, okay. so we're going to say his, his location is a non-US country. So here we've got a self attest, and we say uh, it's going to be in China now. Okay, the next day. And if you go to the same transaction, MMB, to look at the same material, see now it's a different outcome. He's denied access because he's, a, he's in a non US location. So this is a classic ITAR example, and we can replicate any logic uh, 
that exist out there for other compliance issues. Okay, so that's the first one. So um, the next example I want to show you is the script. No, we looked at how user attributes can change. The actual content of the data can change. You know, there's some examples here that customer data could be classified as uh, GDPR. It could be classified as ITAR, EAR. There's many different things it could be classified as. And also locations can change, you know. Is it outside office hours? Is it on mobile device? Is it an unknown IP address? Time of day as well, is it the weekend? Why is someone trying to post invoices at midnight on a Sunday? It may be month end, but outside of that, it could look suspicious. So you could deny access there. And this example, we had the material classified. So what I'll do is I'll change the classification. And you'll see in real time how it affects uh, Jane, the other user. So let's go back into the demo. So I'm in this classification of the SP01. I'll just change this field. To... Yeah, OK, I'm going to save that. So that's saved. And if I go and log back in, or not log in, and go to the transaction again for Jane, because the item is not ITAR anymore, she should be able to access this. OK, and she can, and that's great, as we expect. I'll change it back, so I've got another colleague in here using this demo. There's many problems. Save that. OK, good. And again, and just to go back and check, now she can't access it. OK, so um, you can see how it's real time. So it could be a location. It could be a classification of a material. There's many different things that could change, which are meaning that you can't access the data there. And then we also talked about with role based access control, I mentioned it's allow or deny. You can access the data or you can't. You're in, you can do pretty much anything. Well, we can take it a step further. This is what we call the fine grained access control. We can filter data. We can mass data, we can hide data based on any of the user attributes, the actual content of the data, or the location. So I'll show you a few examples of this now in the demo system. The first one is I've shown the SCP um, GUI. I'll also go into the Fiori cockpit now. I'm not sure if you're aware, but this is the uh, new S4 uh, view of um, accessing data with an SCP. Let me just uh, log in as Adam. It'll be presented at a landing page, and there's lots of tiles and apps here you can interact with. And, and one of them is Profit Center, OK? So um, we've set up the Profit Centers here. So Adam has a company code of uh, 1710, and James is 1720. So we split the Profit Centers here in SAP system so that YB600 Profit Center here is only assigned to that company code 1710. So basically, if you look at all profit centers, Jane should just see the five. You shouldn't see YB600 because it's not assigned to her company code. And uh, Adam should see them all because he's assigned to company code 1710. He should be able to see this profit center. So I find center here, manage profit centers. Click on that. I'll not put any selections in there. Just run it, hit go. You can see, as you can see, all of them including YB600, there's six results there, and YB600 is included. Just log out. And I'll log back in as Jane now. I'll go to the same tile, different landing page, different apps for her, but she can got the Manage Profit Center application there. I'll just hit go again, no filters on there. And she can only see five results, and she can't see the YB600. We've filtered that out. And um, also, something which is uh, quite difficult to control in, in traditional role-based access control is the search functionality. If you look at 
here and try and search and just say go, it'll filter it here as well. Or if I try to filter it and look at the item there, filter it from there. So it gives you the filter at that item level as well. Um, the other thing is I wanted to show is the masking. As I mentioned, we can mask data. So there's a tile here called Material Documents Overview. So I'll just take off this filter and run it as everything for Adam. And there's seven results, and it shows me information about the material documents, the year. Of interest is the material. I can see some of these are ITAR and EAR materials, uh, the plant information, storage location, and stock types. There's lots of information here. Some of this could be sensitive. And again, it depends on what your business is, what your requirements are. But you could see, you could elude that there's some sensitive data here you want to try and control. So I'll just log out and I'll go back in as Jane. And I'll go to the same tile, Material Documents Overview. I'll take out the year as well and just hit go. And what you'll see now is a different out outcome, actually. Still seven results. What we've done is we've masked the material description. We just put star, star, star. And we've also masked the storage location and the stock type. It could be any any information. It could be the plan that you want to uh, mask. It could be the first five. It could be all. It could be the last four digits there. So it's flexible on what you want to hide and how you hide and the rules there as well. Um, so that's the masking as well. And that was in Fiori because I showed you previously everything was in the SAP GUI, traditional user interface with SAP. Um, and then the other thing I want to show you is here, I can hide data. So again, I've got users Adam and Jane. Um, and Adam's now looking at uh, some sensitive HR data. So he's gone to a transaction PA20. And when he looks at this information, it's an info type. It could be lots of sensitive data here. It's, it's related to people. So it could be addresses. It could be date of birth, marital status. This is all very sensitive information. And what you can see here is, you can see everything on this page, including social security number. If Jane did the same, uh, when it's the PA20, you'll notice here we've hidden this field. So if she can't see the social security number now, and she can't see the description or the actual output field itself. It's flexible, you could hide just the output field and show the description still. So again, it could be any field on this, uh, on this page, and it could also be uh, if she tried to look at this through a back door, to things like SE16, SE16N. If you knew this was info type 2, she could try and look at that. And we could filter and mask that data again. So that's just showing the find and access control I can hide, filter, mask data. And um, I did say at the start of this, we have a, a holistic approach where the next labs, you, you have many applications you run your business on. And so far, I focus on SAP and S4 HANA. But if you add some sensitive data, which we did have within SAP and classified it as ITAR, and that same data was held in a collaboration site, you know, SharePoint could be full of lots of documents and unstructured data there, like the Word docs, PDFs, or pictures. If that was classified as well as ITAR, then using the same NextLabs control center, which sits outside of the apps, if we install the plugin, we can then communicate between the two systems and one policy can then control the sensitive data in SharePoint and SAP. So I'll just show you that now. So I've logged in here. This is Jane's um, uh, SharePoint site. And I've gone to a section where there's documents loaded here. And as you can see, we've got the jurisdiction column. And you can see some of them are EIR and ITAR. So if I try and look at this document, you should be able to see this because it's EAR, it's not an ITAR. Okay. 
Okay, so as you can see that document's a Word document. As you can see that's just classified as the AI, and she can see that document. That's fine. If you try to look at this document or this one, they're classified as ITAR. She's denied access. It says, sorry, we couldn't open this uh, due to the ITAR document. And the same would happen for the second document there as well. Okay, she denied access. And that is because, I'll show you again, the policy in play we have here. This top level says that is is uh, is tagged as a SharePoint SAP. We tagged it as two uh, applications. If jurisdiction is ITAR, then deny. Okay. And also, I didn't show you one thing. I want to show you actually the messaging here. SAP messaging. That's how we put the message. To say ITAR access denied. She tries to look at the document itself. So um. That was the um, showing you the different parts of the, the demo, looking at the stock, the classification, the location change. We changed the classification so that Jane could see it, and you saw that happen in real time. We've shown you the fine grained access control, the mask, hide, and filter. Um, and also, we've just shown you there the SharePoint example as well, the same policy protecting two applications. If I just go back to this, um, this slide. These are pretty much uh, a list of common apps we we uh, protect. We have an out of the box enforcers and protection for these applications. If there's some legacy system or a system we don't uh, provide protection for out of the box, like these, for example, Power BI, Spotify, then we have an SDK where you can actually build your own, or we can build an enforcer for you, so you can communicate to that control center. So it really, can protect pretty much any application. And then the last part of this demo is um, I mentioned that we take a risk-based approach. We don't protect all your data. You don't need to protect all your data. It's the sensitive items. You want to protect the crown jewels, as we call it. And then I've shown here pretty much the whole demo was about uh, protecting data at rest. That's SAP DAM. It's also entitlement management for, uh, for SharePoint. We also have another product called the EDRM, Enterprise Digital Rights Management. And this is as you download data, it could be from SAP, it could be from SharePoint, it could be from a collaboration site, it could be from a CAD system. We look at the actual user attributes, we look at the content of the data, we look at actually the location. And based on those three, we can provide encryption. So, you know, a lot of uh, collaboration sharing of document, which is very high in all digital agendas, is based on trust or a process or a member of people remembering not to do things with it. Ultimately, that'll fail. You know, Ed Snowden was trusted, and we all know what happened there. But even uh, if people access through um, people's accounts and hackers gaining access to sensitive and privileged accounts, even if they start to download information or share information, that'll be encrypted at source. So if they got, haven't got the right attributes uh, to read that, then they shouldn't be able to see the document itself. And I'll be running a next webinar on EDRM. And just the example here is with an SAP. I uh, looked at a sensitive uh, report and some finance, finance information. I downloaded it to a local drive. But because I didn't have the correct permission, it was the, actually the actual data itself, the finance data, I'm going to try and open it after the event. So if you want to see that, I can show. Um, so just to recap, we've looked at the classification, the location changes, how it's dynamic, fine grained access control, multiple apps uh, being protected by a policy. And um, I've just alluded there to the collaboration, EDRM, protect on that. So um, I'm not sure if I've got any questions more, because I've not. Yeah, I've been uh, monitoring the um, the little dashboard here. 
uh, John, and there were some questions that came in. So timing was good, so we still have a few minutes here to address some of these. So one of the attendees asked, quote unquote, normal authorizations can easily, easily be bypassed using debug with change mode. How well do the attribute-based authorizations cope with debug? Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that is true. You don't have many people who should have the debug, the slash H to debug and jump without them. Um, this sits outside, the protection sits outside of the SAP system itself. So I didn't talk about the architecture today because I didn't have time. But basically, we enforce through what we call a policy controller, which sits external to the SAP system. And it looks at the attributes in play passed back before you can debug. So if someone enters a transaction, um, it reads the, as they press execute, it reads the variables that have been placed on the screen, evaluates them against the policy and passes back uh, and allow a deny, basically a decision. So the debug shouldn't come into play here. A good question. Okay. Uh, somebody else was wondering, you know, how long does your solution take to implement? Okay, um, depends on the customer project and the requirements, um, but we do say anything between 12 and 25 weeks, basically. Now, this depends on scope, really. Okay. Okay. Um, somebody asked, does it support SAP HANA? I'm guessing uh, yes, it, it means uh, SAP DAM. That's right, yeah. We've got plugins for many SAP products. We've got plugins for SAP ECC, for S4, um, for things like um, the PLM, um, C folders. So, um, yeah, there's, there's many, there's lots of support for the SAP products and the HANA specifically, because everyone's asking about that. As you saw in the demo, I showed yeah. it, it was an actually S, it is an S4 demo system. I showed the S4, the traditional SAP GUI and the new. Fiori S4 HANA cockpit, the front end. Okay. Uh, another question was, you mentioned policies hold the access control logic. How much effort is required to maintain the policies? All right. Okay, yes. Yeah. So with traditional role-based access control, as over time, you can have a problem with what we call role explosion, where you create hard copies of the uh, roles get creating composite roles or derived roles, and that can kind of explode. So you have many, many thousands or millions of roles, in fact. It's a completely different concept with the Next Labs policies. You rarely have more than 20 policies because what happens is you have lots of variables in there, but the policy is quite static, but the variables underneath it change. So the user attributes may change. I may move a function, my company code may change. Um, my location could change, or the classification of a document itself could become declassified or classified. But the policy becomes uh, is quite static; it doesn't often change. So, you don't have lots of policies, and they don't change. So, um, it's quite it's quite a different concept, but it's quite a simple concept when you look at the policies and the management of the policy. Did, I think that, did that explain that? Uh, it made sense to me. I don't know about to the folks on the phone, but yeah, it made sense to me. So, okay, uh, yeah. appreciate yeah, it's the, quite, uh, the reply there. There, there is, you know, there's a lot to take in here. It's a new concept. It's not a new concept, but people aren't aware of this other alternative, which is attribute-based access control, and uh, how it's dynamic as attributes change. So do the decisions in real time. You don't have to have pre-assigned administrator assigning roles to you. Um, there's quite a different concept to grasp and quite a lot of information to take in, but hopefully um, you did get that from the demo. And what I would say is if you've got any specific questions, you can by all means email me. And um, if you want to dive into something deeper to a specific topic or any specific questions, by all means, I'm quite happy to run another demo to a smaller group if required. Okay, let me just take a quick perusal through this thing here. Um, I think we answered all the questions that came in, um, John, so appreciate your responses there. 
I uh, just want to let everybody know, uh, if you're interested in getting any more information on Next Labs or our solutions for, for SAP or for our other applications that we support, just check out our website, uh, www.nextlife.com, or shoot us an email, or John in particular, uh, and someone will get back to you right away. So as I said at the top part of the uh, webinar, we'll send you a link to the recording.